Our next guest has captured 55% market share of Kraft non-alcoholic beer and recently landed a $50 million investment from a beverage giant, uh, um, Keurig and Dr. Pepper. Joining us right now is Athletic Brewing co-founder and CEO, uh, Bill uh, Schwelt. Uh, Schwelt, it's great to see you. Uh, you have a bunch of uh, fanboys and fangirls at the table, Bill. We were just during the commercial break talking about uh, the beer, or, or I should say the non-alcoholic beer, but also we should say the, the seltzer with, uh, infused with hops. That, that actually was the winner around the table here. So we think what, what you want... You want to tell them what you think? Yeah, our, our household wants you to double down on day pack. I don't know if that's possible, but it sells out pretty quickly, which is a good problem to have. So I love the, it. So okay, so we're walking into dry, to, uh, to to dry January for for some folks. Uh, the question that I have just about the I mean, you've had this enormous growth. Uh, you now have this new investment. How big a market do you think this can be? And what do you think has changed? I mean. Literally in the past two or three years, for, for, for your business to grow, I, I was telling the story also, and I think folks might have heard it a year or two ago when I think you were on the broadcast. I showed up at a party. Somebody handed me a uh, Flatic Brew. I thought, it was a, I thought it was alcoholic beer. I said, oh, this is really good stuff. What is this? And then someone said, the joke's on you. There's no alcohol in here. But, but, but people have had not, non-alcoholic beer forever. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me back on, Andrew. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, this is the moment we've been waiting for in the category. It's non-alcoholic beer has gone from something that was 0.3% of the beer category and a total afterthought and penalty box beverage to something that is really exciting, aspirational, and kind of reframing how modern adults think. It's now from 0.3% to over 2% of all beer sold at grocery is non-alcoholic beer. But in some retail national chain retailers at grocery who've bought in, it's over 8% of their beer category. So, like, it is headed emerging onto the scene in a big way in people's lifestyles, and that's nationally, not just on the Bill, coast. How and much of this is a brand thing versus, you think, a taste thing? And the reason I ask this question, I've also been fascinated by another business uh, called Liquid Death. I don't know if you're familiar with it. This is a seltzer sure. water that just looks cool. It's like a brand, um, and they are killing it. I mean, just destroying. Uh, I mean, it's, it's an amazing uh, franchise that they're building. It's a it's a can of uh, seltzer water, but kids are kids are drinking it at like parties because it looks like because beer. Of the it name, looks cool. Liquid death. Liquid death. It looks cool. So how much of this For is sure. a a branding issue versus the actual taste issue? I know it's probably hard for you to say oh, it's not the taste issue, but how, the framing it, of really the whole situation. Be, it's really got to be everything these days. It's there's so many great small businesses out there. It's got to be an, a world changing product that gets people excited that with marketing and branding, it empowers them and they're excited to hold in their hand. And then distribution is as important as anything, too. So it's, it's really got to be the whole package of everything. And you've got to invest in your entire business. And that's what we've really done with this latest investment from Curry, Dr. Pepper. Caps off about $175 million total that we've invested in our facilities on both coasts in the country, in San Diego and Connecticut, to be a totally differentiated producer of non-alcoholic beer. And that's an investment that no one else is making in the category. So Athletic is really pulling it forward. Uh, as you said, we're a 55% share player of craft non-alcoholic beer. But we're also passing the biggest of the big brands in the overall category and are on track this year to become the number one player overall in the category. And there are big multinationals making huge bets on this category. But not all the companies that are trying to operate in this space have been able to make it, Bill. I mean, I, I have been a fan of a, a low ABV aperitif company called House, which was unable to complete a sale of the company. They had an investor pull out. And the bankers cited issues with distribution, the transfer of licenses, and some investors' vice clauses. And so that company is just going away. And I'm wondering you know, how you overcome some of those hiccups. Obviously, no ABV is slightly different. But, but I'm just wondering you know, what you see happening in the landscape overall as other companies try to chase this trend. Yeah, it's it's a well-rounded business. Uh, John, our co-founder, is an incredible brewmaster. Alex, our chief sales officer, has built a distribution network and relationships like right down to the street level across the country. Um, and Jamie, our COO, keeps it all going from the supply chain, logistics, and everything. And you really have to have all of that all together. And we're super lucky to have an incredibly talented team across the country. Um, 
but we are lucky to have great support in the category. We do like what Heineken, Bud Zero, and another of other smaller producers are doing in the category. And there's some other exciting things coming with Corona Zero to help round out the shelf this year. Athletic wants help building this category, and it's in a really exciting place for the year ahead. A lot of bars and restaurants are excited.